Hello and welcome to all of you. You're watching Tech24. I'm Julia Seeger. Coming up, from Narcos to House of Cards and most recently The Crown, what do all these series have in common? They were all premiered on Netflix. In this edition, we take you to the streaming giant's headquarters in California and tell you how the service is now using big data to predict what its viewers want to see. And in Test 24, we'll test Dia 1, a robot entirely made in France that's almost as cute as R2-D2. Its purpose, purify the air in our homes. Television has undergone two major revolutions. The first one occurred in 1975, when Sony launched Betamax, enabling people to record shows and watch them later. The second is still happening now, and it's called Netflix. With almost 94 million users worldwide, it's become the number one streaming platform in the world. It did so by creating original series based on all the big data it collected on its viewers. In other words, data inspired the creative direction. The Tech24 team traveled to Los Gatos, California, to Netflix's headquarters, to learn more about how the streaming platform works. This, as it was launching its very latest production, Marvel's Iron Fist. Anka Luca has the story. Welcome to Netflix's War Room. This is where the magic happens. At the company's California headquarters, an army of engineers is getting ready for an epic battle. Today is the day the latest installment of Netflix and Marvel's Defender series is going online. And Iron Fist needs to get out to all 190 countries in the Netflix kingdom. The whole painstaking process is monitored closely. We have here tonight part participants from across various engineering teams, groups that go through and write the synopsis, uh, synopses uh, for every episode of the show, the globalization team that makes sure that the, everything is translated well. For 20 years, Netflix has been developing a unique brand of storytelling. What started as a DVD delivery service exploded when it went digital in 2007. Today, the Los Gatos company is in a class all its own, having carved out its very own section of the market. More than 16 billion hours of Netflix programs were streamed in just the last three months of 2016. From Marvel superheroes to critically acclaimed documentaries, the streaming platform has its sights on world domination. Netflix hit the jackpot in 2013 when it started producing original content. This year, the company invested $6 billion in production. But about a third of its employees make up the tech team. They get $1 billion per year to test the latest technology on the market, from the big screen to the small. Uh, let me hit the go button here on both of these. Um, this is Chef's Table in France. Um, and what you'll see is uh, the picture on the right is the version in, in high dynamic range in Dolby Vision. The picture on the left is the same phone, um, and it's delivering a standard picture, a standard dynamic range picture. And what you'll see is things like the, uh, the detail and the shadows. It's much greater on the Dolby Vision picture. And the color of the sunset, when, well, the sunrise, I think, over here you see is, is much more vivid, much more orange. It's washed out white on the standard dynamic range picture. While Netflix has around 94 million registered accounts, up to 200 million viewers use the service every month. And each viewer has a personalized homepage, thanks to a powerful set of algorithms. The algorithms, after you have a good design that's easy to use, people are only going to look at 40, 50, maybe 60 titles anytime they visit Netflix. But there are thousands of titles. So the ones that we put at the top for any individual Netflix member are important. So that's how we use the algorithms and the data underneath that. We figure out, based on what you've watched, when you've watched it, how much you watched, we make a determination about those are the titles we should float to the top. But what happens once they harness all that data? Unlike Silicon Valley neighbors Google and Facebook, Netflix says they haven't had any privacy issues. They have to serve two masters, my friends who work for those companies. They have to serve the advertisers and they have to serve the consumer. We're a subscription service. With all the data we collect, we only do one thing with that data, and that's to make each individual's experience better. We're very, we respect the privacy. We just please stay with our service another month and keep on subscribing. That's what we use the data for. To keep their viewers coming back, Netflix is ready to do just about anything. 
including advanced research on the most subtle user behaviors. Deep in the laboratories of audiovisualist specialist Dolby, scientists are working on the future of your Netflix viewing experience. Thermal cameras, EEG helmets, wrist sensors, it's a brave new world of biological user testing. We use information about um, the thermal response of his face so we can pick up changes in the temperature of his face that allows us to also tell things like engagement or how hard his brain is working. We might call that cognitive load. Uh, these are all different rich, in, rich tools that we can use and we track his emotional, use uh, different data science techniques to track the emotional state of his face and, and try to predict what emotions he's having. Or maybe we'll look at information about where he's, his eye is tracking or even the diameter of his pupil. Even more user data to help Netflix create ever more captivating and immersive content. Next up on the streaming giant's to-do list, revolutionizing the silver screen. But there's one rival that may have already beat Netflix to the punch. Amazon Studios, the online shopping site's creative arm, already has an Oscar under its belt for last year's breakout hit, Manchester by the Sea. The ball's now in Netflix's court to push the envelope even further in the fast-paced world of video streaming. And it's time to welcome our in-house expert, Dan and Jay Cattlecar. Hello and welcome, Dan. Hello, Julia. Netflix is the world's number one video streaming platform, but there are other competitors around the world that are snapping at its heels. Which one are they? That's right. One of the most interesting uh, streaming platforms is Mubi. It was founded in 2007, and the concept is very unique. So instead of having an endless list of uh, hundreds of titles on the platform, there are only 30 titles available at any given point of time. So the idea is to have a limited choice so that you don't get overwhelmed by having too many too many choices, so you end up uh, not, you know, not watching the which, best, right. what, not watching the best movie, just to give you an example. So what they do is a film curator adds one title every day, which lasts for 30 days on that platform, and after that, it goes off the platform. So you get to get 30 uh, titles to choose from, and that apparently makes for, I don't know, an interesting uh, viewing, because then you really focus on one of those 30 titles. And now there's another battle of the platforms happening this time in India with Hotstar. That's right, Hotstar has taken the lead because first of all, it was launched in early 2015. And the other two players, Netflix and uh, Amazon Prime Video, they will launch later, Netflix in 2016 and Amazon Prime Video in December uh, last year. So Hotstar has an added advantage because it also provides, besides uh, the entertainment part, the global entertainment uh, uh, content, it also has some local content which is very powerful. So for example, it uh, has uh, local channels which can be aired uh, through all the devices. It also provides sports content. You know, cricket is extremely popular in India, so that is also a big advantage for them. Right. And recently, like in October two, 2016, uh, during the Kabaddi World Cup, Kabaddi is a very popular sport in India, they, uh, they, they fed, there was a live feed of this event in the stereoscopic 3D virtual reality uh, mode, so it was a unique experience. You, you could watch this uh, event using Google Cardboards, right. which was something new uh, for any sports event. And what about in the rest of the world, really quickly, in Asia and Africa? Yeah, in Malaysia, there is a company called iFlix, which is also big into local content as well. It is very popular in Southeast Asia and uh, Pakistan and Sri Lanka. And in Africa, there's a service called Tulun Tulu, in South Africa, that is. So it means streaming in Zulu, so that is also uh, gaining a lot of uh, viewership. Right, Tulun Tulu, not easy to say, yeah. <laughs> but definitely a promising mobile video streaming platform from South Africa. Thank you, Dan. We're gonna move on now to Test24. Dia One is now joining us on set, and I said it earlier, the resemblance with R2-D2 is striking, Dan. That's right, it was dubbed as the R2-D2 of climate change because ex it was extremely popular during the COP21 conference, which was held in Paris in uh, 2015. Now, as you can see, it is an air purifier. Here you will see uh, there's a screen. The screen indicates the quality of air. The, this robot is equipped with multiple sensors. Uh, these sensors, they detect humidity, they detect temperature. Uh, so the robot keeps moving, so you can have a pre-programmed path for the robot. It is essentially meant for large spaces like office, uh, offices or museums and it will keep on going along this path. Now, as it moves, as you can see here, uh, the robot, it sucks air at the bottom. There's a set of filters in the middle part. And so this, just like a vacuum cleaner. Would. Exactly, it sucks, and then the filtered air is released from the top. Now here, there are multiple sensors like the camera, so it can see what, where it exactly is headed to. 
There are anti-obstacle sensors around this part. And as you can see, if I put my foot here, it won't move, it will turn, it turn around. And so there's no danger of it to avoid getting you. damaged. Right. That's right. And it is entirely made in France. And now tell us about another robot that's uh, set to uh, become part of our homes very soon. Well, we've already seen a couple of them like Alexa and Google Home. We have tested them on the set. But there's an interesting concept uh, which, is being, which, was de which is developed rather by a London startup called AI Build. So what they're doing is they have built an AI port that attaches uh, to the ceiling. It is equipped with six cameras and it has an inbuilt computer which can be taught to recognize faces and to recognize gestures. So this uh, particular uh, hub can control multiple devices like uh, lighting devices, uh, thermostats, etc. And just by doing hand gestures, you will be you can control like you can turn off the light or turn on the light. So right. So you're essentially letting Big Brother in, inside your house. Yes, we already have, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dan. That brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech 24. We hope you enjoyed the show and do stay with us here on France 24.